Hello there, welcome. Today we are looking at most effective ways to use your armor. And to bring an example for these, we playing a... Hello there, welcome. Today we are looking at how to use your armor the most effective. And to have an example for this, I'm playing Levaya against Azalea. Levaya famously has a lot of armor in her kit. And quite exciting pieces as well. And we'll have very very good examples of the use cases of the apex bonebreaker and the scowling flashback here and these are not only interesting for leviah of course you can you can use those in ko as well you can use those in reiner and you should also azalea is a pretty relevant hero in the meta and always has been probably will be for a long time but let's get down to gameplay first as Levaya, we are looking to fill our graveyard as soon as possible. And because my hand in the very first turn was awkward, I actually decided to just play out that Warmongers and pitch away Blood Rush. This way we get to actually play the other Blood Rush now. Unfortunately, I needed to get one of those blues out of my hand because they are non-sixes. And if Blood Rush discards a non-six, the turn just ends. But the stuff we drew wasn't too bad either. We get to come in with a 4 card 15 here. Or let's say actually it was a 3 card 15 because we set up an agility and my token for our next turn with the smashback Alehorn. And we're already ahead into the game damage race. In a aggressive matchup like this, I like to go second. Even though Azalea in theory can do overpower or actually dominate things. With her hero power in the very first turn. We are willing to take that risk. And now unfortunately we don't draw a blue. So we won't be able to use our agility very well. But nevertheless I'm not blocking. I'm gonna get at least 12 value out of this hand either way. And I rather decide to make this game quick. Because whenever we both are low, Leviah should be at the advantage. Because Azalea gets way more value out of big hands. While whenever we force her to block, so she doesn't die. She'll have to give us some cards and her hands become more... Or let's say they, they get a lower average value. Now, of course, we could have put armor into those last arrows because I mean scape skin and bone breaker they allow you to block twice right but it is very likely that we will be able to block out some very relevant on hits later on so this armor doesn't only provide us with life in this matchup it also provides us with this on hit protection Now with this hand, we are very much forced to block with some cards. Because unless we roll Skep Skins, we won't be able to convert this fully. And even with Skep Skins, we probably also only get that 12 value. So blocking does get us that 12 value anyways, and it's the way safer option. Now, this arrow comes in with Dominate and quite a few relevant on hits. So it's not necessarily a bad decision to, to say, okay, I, I'm going to put some armor in front here. But again, our hand doesn't actually accomplish anything offensively. So there's not really a need to protect it here. Neither from the on hit of the, the discard buff thingy. Not the inertia token either. Because we're just gonna throw out the arsenal anyways. What is kind of unfortunate for us is that we did not manage to get many blooded cards into our graveyard and therefore our banishes won't get many blooded cards into our banish zone. Now why would I want blooded cards in my banish zone? The thing is, if we get to flip into our demi hero, the Blasmophet consumed, every blooded card in our banish zone will be a hand card that we have more in each turn that we live under 13 HP. Therefore, we are actually able to block with three cards every turn and still pitch with one and roll the fifth card and get 
way more valuable hands than our opponent does. But the matchup is going really well so far, so we might not even need that advantage later on. Now, premeditate is an on hit. You are more willing than everything else to block out with your armor. But Azalea actually needs to keep a card in hand here. So maybe we just let that hit anyways. Sleep Dart turns off our hero ability, which isn't relevant right now either. Our hero says that if we banish a 6, Bloodhead gets turned off. But we don't have any Bloodhead. And I am pondering though about putting the Apex Bonebreaker in here. And it's not a bad decision. The game is coming to a close and I want to swing big next turn and if that's coming in for nine it's way harder for azalea to block it out if she was to block it out she would get a quicken token so if we can keep her from doing so we, we are very happy and also azalea doesn't have many three blocks so that nine power is really hard for her to block out Now we also get to set up that sand packing into the arsenal. Sand packing and scenes are, are extremely strong against Azalea because as I've been saying that those five cut hands are where she's at her strongest and if we threaten to destroy her arsenal we are getting at least two cards. With the apex bone breaker those cards are coming in for seven so we are at least threatening three cards to be honest for her tunic. Now bull. We are getting quite low, and as I said, I want that my token from the Apex Bonebreaker here anyways. So I'm just putting that Scapskins in here now. Scapskins right here did not only prevent the 2 damage, it also prevented that on hit of the Blood Rot, so actually it prevented 4 damage. And not even a need to threaten more than just that attack right here because now Azalea only has three cards. And that's sending the Ravenous Rebel is a mistake Azaleas often do against Brutes because they don't respect the Scowling Flashback. And those chains where Azalea wants to attack twice are exactly those moments where you need to put the Scowling Flashback in front of her. And now there's no way to, for her to get resources and therefore no way for her to get that arrow that might be in her hand into her arsenal so she can't attack again. And we get to keep a whole hand now. Attack twice using that agility token. And all of a sudden Azalea is as low as we need her to be. That she has now to uh, start to... She now has to respect our, our attacks and has to actually put blocking cards into here. I'm now wondering about whether I should play any of these agility makers out and I decide against it. I just want to present as much damage as possible right now. Because we do have that go again source in the Red Screamer anyways. And notice that we still have the Carrion Husk as, as well. So we are doing very well right now. Getting rid of the blue card to stay above 13 health. And just in, in case we might need to flip into our damage hero and in drawing two blues here we basically sealed her fate we're at least coming in with 16 damage this turn so even if she has all three blocks she gets down to how many hp did she have to one or let's say two if she puts that cross flip in front and then she's definitely dead to a reckless swing that we at one point will draw and therefore as i decided to concede here um yeah, we didn't even need our hero, our demi-hero power here. But those matchups can go very favorable, very, very favorably for Azalea as well. But even then, as I've been saying, we still have that Karen has, we still have that demi-hero. And if you've got some blood dead cards in your banish zone, you're just able to basically get a fifth card for free every hand. Which makes a difference in, difference in those aggro matchups most of the time. So that's it for this gameplay video. If you want to see more, there's been some katsu over the last days and I will upload some more Levaya. 
So I'd, I'd appreciate the subscribe and I'll see you then.